Now, I read this week about a Russian pastor. In fact, this man's name is Georgie Vins, and Georgie was in a line of nine successive pastors. You know, grandfather, great-grandfather, and all that had just been nine successive generations of, of pastors. And his father whose name was Peter Vims, who was on the bottom left there, he went as an American missionary to Russia back in 1926 and was put in prison there because of his outspoken faith. And Georgie was born in Russia, so he became a Russian citizen. His father died in prison. His mother went to prison for a while as well. He grew up, became a pastor, and became the head of president of the Russian Council of Churches, went to prison himself, and finally the Russians... Stripped him of his citizenship, exiled him to the United States, and he worked from the United States trying to support the churches that were there. He got a message from one of the pastors there, and one of the pastors in Russia that had kind of taken over the job that he was doing gave this quote in a quarterly that he sent back with regard to the Council of Evangel Evangelical Churches, Baptist Churches in Russia. It says this, when Christians in the West ask what they can do to help us, who are being persecuted for our faith, I answer this way. We need your prayer support, but live your lives in such a way that your prayers for us will be heard by God. Can you imagine people around the globe, their greatest concern about us as the church in America is not about our numbers, because there are a lot of people in church today their concern is that we would be the kind of people whose prayers could actually be heard to benefit them. And you ask the question, where do you fit into all of that? So maybe as Paul is challenging this church, still a very young church has been misled somewhat and he's got them back on track. Kind of as a parting message to them, trying to get them back in line with where the heart of God would have them to be.